Main event, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish versus Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. Had a very, very good TV tag match. <laughs> so let's start with Mark Henry. They go to the uh, preview for this, and it's a Jurassic Express, and it's Adam Cole and Bobby Fish. And uh, Jungle Boy actually had a great line where he said, When I saw my first Bobby Fish match, I won. Yes, he was in it. I laughed I, I my beat ass him, off. Yes. And Cole puts over his good friend of Bobby Fish. And then Mark Henry says, it's time for the main event. And everyone chants along now. Now oh, it's yeah, a yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a few weeks ago they did it and everyone chanted along. But now it's now it's a thing. And this, of course, led to the match. Yes. Which got a lot of time. A ton of time. And it should have. It has a very, very good match. So the key to it, besides just four awesome wrestlers having a great match, is at the end, when things started to look bleak for Cole and Fish, the Bucks come out. But Christian chases them away with a chair. Christian Cage chases them away with a chair. And somehow uh, it ends up with the Bucks and Adam Cole up atop of the ramp. They have abandoned. Bobby well, I think Fish. Adam Cole went after Christian. And as he was up there on the ramp with the Bucks, he turns around and realizes that Bobby Fish is fucked. Yes. But he's too big a coward to go help him. Exactly. Yes. And the Bucks are too big a cowards to go in there and help him. Yes. So they all stand there and they look at the poor guy mm -hmm. as he's killed. Yes. And they, they beat him up with all sorts of double teams and Jungle Boy puts him away with a snare trap. And I watched this and I, I've seen Jungle Boy do the snare trap before, but I never really paid attention. It just looks like it's a like an STF, and that was enough for me. I watch him do it, put this hold on fish, and maybe he's just, uh, that's the way he's applying it, there's more of this more aggression in it or something, but this move is cool. <laughs> this is a cool submission hold. He's, uh, grapevines both legs and cranks in the head, and when you see him crank this move in like this and hook it in deep, fish is fucked. There's no doubt. No doubt about that. He had some sort of wacky submission that he used on me in that Jungle Boy match. It was like a... Uh... Some weird double underhook, something or other, standing. And uh, this move is much better. Mm, yes. Yeah. It's a far superior submission move here. And it's very interesting, this Bobby Fish, Adam Cole relationship. Yes, because yes. Adam Cole, you know, the first time he introduced Bobby Fish, he was cold towards him. Then he starts calling him like his, his good friend, Bobby Fish. Mm -hmm. But he's constantly leaving this guy to the wolves. Yes. And, you know, I think this is one of those things where... And I don't know this. I mean, maybe they know exactly where they're going. But to me, you're planting the seeds for many different opportunities right here. Mm -hmm. Because obviously at some point, Adam Cole is going to split from the elite and he's going to go full babyface. Sure. I don't think he needs to do that soon. I don't know if Kyle O'Reilly is leaving WWE. But if Kyle O'Reilly leaves WWE then him and Bobby Fish reuniting and their baby faces and they're going up against the elite and you can do like all sorts of great matches for months on end with, with various combinations of those guys. Then Adam Cole can leave the elite and he reunites with the former Undisputed. They're now a three-man babyface team. Then they can do all sorts of great matches. I mean, I'm not sure which way they're going and I don't know if they know what Kyle is doing. Because, in theory, Kyle can't talk to anybody until his contract sure, is out. yes, yes. So it, it could be, and maybe Kyle doesn't even know. Who knows what they're going to offer this guy? So maybe they're, they're, they're planting seeds that uh, you don't know what flower is going to bloom. But there are many opportunities, many options. When the Young Bucks came out on, for this match, they, they popped me because they both put their fingers up to their lips to shush the crowd. Shh. It's total Wiley e. Coyote. They, they are great cartoon characters. And it's Nick, uh, Looney Nick, Tunes. Nick Jackson had somehow commandeered an NXT 2.0 shirt and pants. If you see this outfit, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Just massive colors and rainbows and... Man, this was a douchey getup. I think one of the announcers actually confused Nick and Matt. Because Nick was the one wearing the suit that just had paint splashed all yes, over it. Yes. Right. And one of the announcers said that Matt's daughter had made this in kindergarten or something I like that. I see. He had some I, see. So I think he was confused because Matt's well, Nick get up was ridiculous, but in a different way. <laughs> Nick has kind of off and on over the past few months stopped dyeing his hair. He was, right. He was blonde for a long time, and now a lot of the times it looks brunette. So No, he, he did dye his hair. 
All right. He dyed his hair a ridiculous color. I see. That was part of the gimmick. Right. He was blonde, and he, he dyed it like an auburn color. Okay. And then he grew the preposterous facial hair. That and is. now he's got the chain that comes from his the, the, nose the to his nose ear. nose to ear chain is brilliant. Yes. And, uh, Jane and his Wild fucking stuff. hat. Rachel Bowen from Skid Row. Yes. Nick, yeah. Nick Jackson is, is seriously one of the funniest guys in all of wrestling. And he never gets credit for it. Because, you know, the people that get credit for being funny are the ones that... You know, they're bombastic and they say crazy shit or whatever. He's understated. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> he, between my favorite Nick Jackson stuff, is one time he just came out and, and was just strutting and dancing and lip syncing to his the elite's music. <laughs> yeah. And it was like more entertaining than his match. His match was very entertaining. And then I just remember one, it was shortly after the Bucks turned and they're doing a, they, they're, they're posing and doing a photo. And Matt Jackson just looks like a pro wrestler. Nick is a sultry <laughs> come hither look on his eyes like halfway closed and he had like the Fu Manchu mustache it was straight off a 1970s album cover like a Bee Gees thing or something he did the smolder it was smolder he was smoldering that is yeah. true it is uh, amusing to me that the uh, everything going on with the elite right now all their storylines and there's a there's a hundred things going on and there's a hundred ways they can go but at the end of it all of it is high school girls drama it is yep. friends and who's better friends with whom and Kenny Omega is friends with Adam Cole and the Bucks, but he's made it very clear he's better friends with the Bucks. And that's going to come into play. And Adam Cole is friends with the Bucks and Fish, but he's also better friends with the Bucks. He's only using Fish. He's pretending to be Fish's friend, and this is going to pay off somewhere. It's entertaining. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance, this doesn't seem... Max, smarten up to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You're being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.